This is a tutorial on solving radical expressions. Let's say we were given the radical expression the square root of x is equal to 16. If we wanted to solve this for values of x that make this true, we would have to get x alone on one side of the equal sign, except x is being square rooted. So how do we get x alone on one side? Well, we have to do the opposite of a square root to x. Well, the opposite of a square root is a square. So I would have to square the square root of x. So I would have to square the left-hand side of this equation. If I square the left-hand side of this equation, I have to square the right-hand side of this equation. Otherwise, I change the value of my equation. Now when I square the square root of x, my square and square root just cancel, and we're left with x. This is equal to our right-hand side, which is 16 squared, and 16 squared is equal to 256. So I've just solved this equation for x, and x is equal to 256. However, whenever you solve a radical expression, or more importantly, whenever you take the square of both sides of your equation, you always have to go back and check your answer. So to check our answer, we're going to take this value of x, 256, and we're going to plug it back into our original equation and solve. If I do that, I'll have the square root of 256, and that's supposed to be equal to 16. Well, the square root of 256 is 16, so we have 16 is equal to 16, and that makes sense, which means x equaling 256 is a valid solution for this equation. Now let's try this again. Here we have the square root of 3x is equal to 9. Now x is not alone underneath this square root sign, but that doesn't matter. We still got to get rid of the square root sign to solve this for x. So we're going to square both sides of this equation. On the left hand side we're going to square the square root of 3x. And on the right hand side we're going to square 9. Now on my left hand side my square root and my square are going to cancel. And on the left hand side we're just left with 3x. On my right hand side 9 squared, well that's equal to 81. So I'm left with 3x is equal to 81. Well, this is easy to solve for x. I just divide both sides by 3, and I'll get x is equal to 27. But again, earlier, I took the square of both sides of my equation. And whenever you take the square of both sides of your equation, you have to check your answer. So we're going to take this value of 27 for x, and we're going to plug it back into our original equation. If we do that, we'll have the square root of 3 times 27 is hopefully equal to 9. Now 3 times 27 is 81, so this is the square root of 81, and that's hopefully equal to 9. Take the square root of 81 and you get 9, and 9 is equal to 9, and that makes sense, which means x equaling to 27 is a valid solution for this equation. Now let's try something a little bit harder. Here we have the square root of 2x plus 1, and then minus 1 is equal to 2. Now my x is underneath my radical or my square root sign, which means I'm going to have to square both sides of this equation to solve for x. However, this minus 1 on the outside makes that difficult to do. If I square the left hand side of this equation, I'll end up with 2x plus 1 underneath the square root sign, and then subtracting 1, and then we would square this. This is a binomial, and if we were to multiply this out, we would have to FOIL, and this would get very difficult. So instead of doing that, let's instead add 1 to both sides of this equation. Basically, the idea is to get your square root term alone on one side of the equal sign. So if we add 1 to both sides, we'll have the square root of 2x plus 1 
is equal to 3. Now that my square root term is alone on one side of the equal sign, I can square both sides of my equation. If I square the square root of 2x plus 1, my square and square root will cancel. So on my left hand side I'm left with just 2x plus 1. On my right hand side I have 3 squared and that's equal to 9. So what I'm left with is 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. This is easy to solve for x. First I would subtract 1 from each side. I end up with 2x is equal to 8. And then divide both sides by 2 and we get x is equal to 4. So we found our solution, x is equal to 4, but earlier we took the square of both sides of our equation, which means we always have to go back and check our solution. So I'm going to take this 4 and I'm going to plug it back in for x. If I do that, I'll have the square root of 2 times 4, and then plus 1, and then minus 1 on the outside, and hopefully that's equal to 2. Now 2 times 4 is 8, so this is the square root of 8 plus 1, and then minus 1 is equal to 2. 8 plus 1 is 9, so this is the square root of 9, minus 1 is hopefully equal to 2. The square root of 9 is 3, so 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, 3 minus 1 is 2, so we have 2 is equal to 2, and that makes sense, which means x is equal to 4 is a valid solution for this equation. Now let's look at another example. Here we have 3 times the square root of x plus 2 plus 5, and that's equal to 11. Now again, our x is underneath the square root sign, so we're going to have to get this square root term alone on one side of the equal sign. So our first step is going to be subtracting 5 from both sides. If we do that, we'll have 3 times the square root of x plus 2 is equal to 6. Now, my square root term is alone on one side of the equal sign, except for this 3. We've got to get this 3 out of here too, so we're going to divide both sides by 3. If I do that, I'll have the square root of x plus 2 is equal to 2. Now my square root term is alone on one side of the equal sign, so now I can square both sides. If I square the square root of x plus 2, my square root and my square will cancel, and on my left hand side I'm left with just x plus 2. On my right hand side I have 2 squared and that's equal to 4, so I have x plus 2 is equal to 4. Subtract 2 from both sides and we'll get x is equal to 2. So I found my solution, but again I squared both sides of my equation earlier, which means you have to check your solution. So I'm going to take x is equal to 2 and plug 2 back in for x in our original equation. If I do that, I'll have 3 times the square root of 2 plus 2 and then plus 5 and hopefully that's equal to 11. 2 plus 2 is 4, so this is 3 times the square root of 4 and then plus 5 and hopefully that's equal to 11. The square root of 4 is 2, so this is 3 times 2 plus 5 is equal to 11. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5. 6 plus 5 is 11, so we end up with 11 equaling 11. And that makes sense. 11 does equal 11, which means x is equal to 2 is a valid solution for this equation. Now we have an equation where we have a square root on both sides of our equal sign. Here we have the square root of 2x minus 7 is equal to the square root of 7. But that's okay. Our term with the x underneath the square root is alone on one side of the equal sign. So again, we're just going to square both sides. So we're going to take the square root of 2x minus 7 and we're going to square it. But if we square the left hand side, we have to square the right hand side. If I square my left hand side, my square and my square root will cancel, and we'll be left with just 2x minus 7. On my right hand side, 
Again, my square and my square root are going to cancel. And on my right-hand side, I'm just left with 7. So we have 2x minus 7 is equal to 7. I can solve this for x. I just add 7 to both sides. I'll get 2x is equal to 14. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x is equal to 7. Now we found our solution, x is equal to 7, but we squared both sides of our equation earlier, so we have to check our solutions. So I'm going to take this 7 and I'm going to plug it back in for x. If I do that, I'll have 2 times 7 minus 7, all being square rooted, is hopefully equal to the square root of 7. 2 times 7 is 14, so this is the square root of 14 minus 7. 14 minus 7 is 7. So we have the square root of 7 is equal to the square root of 7. And that makes sense, which means our solution, x is equal to 7, is a good one. Now let's look at this last example. Here we have a variable on both sides of our equation. We have the square root of x plus 12 is equal to x. Well, I have my square root term with the x underneath it alone on one side of the equal sign. So as usual, we're going to square both sides of this equation. We're going to square the square root of x plus 12, and then we're going to square the right hand side, which is just x. Now on my left hand side, my square and my square root will cancel, and we'll be left with just x plus 12. On my right hand side I have x and then squared, or just x squared. So I have x plus 12 is equal to x squared. This is a quadratic equation. I'm going to move all the terms to one side by subtracting x from both sides and subtracting 12 from both sides. If I do that I'll have x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to 0. Now this x squared minus x minus 12 I can factor. This will factor into an x minus 4 and an x plus 3. And it's still equal to 0. Now through the zero product property, if either one of these binomials is equal to 0, then the whole thing is equal to 0. So I'm going to take x minus 4 and I'm going to set that equal to 0 and x plus 3 set that equal to 0. In my first equation, I'll add 4 to both sides, and I get x is equal to 4. In my second equation, I subtract 3 from both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 3. So my solutions, then, are x is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 3. But again, earlier, I squared both sides of my equation, which means you always have to check your answers. First I'll check 4. I plug that back in for x. So we'll have the square root of 4 plus 12 is hopefully equal to 4. Now 4 plus 12 is 16, so this is the square root of 16. and Hopefully that's equal to 4. The square root of 16 is 4, so we have 4 is equal to 4. And that makes sense, so x is equal to 4 is a valid solution. Next, I'm going to plug in negative 3. If I do that, I'll have the square root of negative 3 plus 12 is hopefully equal to negative 3. Now, negative 3 plus 12 is 9, so we have the square root of 9 is equal to negative 3. Take the square root of 9 and you get a positive 3, so we have positive 3 is equal to negative 3. Well, that doesn't make any sense. That means x is equal to negative 3 is what we call an extraneous solution. It's a solution that's created when we square both sides of our equation. But it's not actually a solution to our original equation. So this is why whenever you square both sides of your equation you always check your answer. Because you're looking for extraneous solutions. The only real solution to this equation is x is equal to 4. And that completes the tutorial on solving radical expressions.